Hi there, Sue Rayner here, and uh, another lesson. I'm going to show you how to draw this werewolf. This comes from my book, uh, Monster Boy, Werewolf Whale. And uh, let's see if we can see him inside going, oh, <laughs> let's get on. I'll show you how to do it. Well, as ever, we're going to need a pen and a pencil and an eraser to wrap out all the pencil lines. And as ever, I want you to draw really, really lightly. I'm going to make a little mark just to see where I fit on the camera. That's good. Now, um, for this werewolf, I want a kind of a circular kind of face. And I'm going to have him just at, a, have at an angle to give him a bit of interest. And his ears go straight up and back down like that. And he's kind of got another circle inside. So it's almost like a hoodie. In fact, I'll tell you something. Look, when... When I first got into children's books, the thing that really inspired me was Maurice Sendak's Where the Wild Things Are. And uh, and when this book came out, somebody pointed out to me that the werewolf looks very like Max, as if he's grown up and gone bad. And uh, and I didn't realise I was doing that. And, uh, and now I realise this book is probably my homage to Maurice Sendak and, uh, and Where the Wild Things Are. So, so it does look a bit like... Um, where the wild things are but that was completely unintentional uh, it's all subconscious isn't it so anyway we all stand on the shoulders of giants and Morris Sandak's kind of my hero so as an illustrator and, and as a writer he's a brilliant writer two two circles for the eyes and eyeballs and his eyebrows are going to be really big deep V shapes and you want a kind of a circly kind of a nose and then out of that will come a moustache, which is like kind of two curves coming underneath it. Underneath there, you want a kind of a W, a curvy W shape. And those will be his teeth. Right. Now he's dancing in the moonlight. He's going, woo, woo, and his arms are up like that. So they're kind of L shapes. Well, that's not because it's backwards. It's a back backward L. And then the thumbs go like that. And they turn into kind of hooks. They turn into talons. So now... His first finger is going to be the one nearest to you. So draw that carefully like that. So it's going to be a curve and back on itself. And then the next finger will curve out as well. And will then come back on itself. So there are these kind of curvy things like that. And then the next finger will do the same. And then the last little finger will do the same thing as well. I don't think you can call a talon a pinky, really. Uh, a pink on, I don't know what you call it. Anyway, so, so, and then the kind of the palm of the hand is kind of a bit like a circle, really, so that can be like that. And then that's his body. Now bring the body round, and that's going to be his thigh, and he's got one leg up, going, shaking it at the moon. And then, one two three four those are going to be this kind of talons on his feet and then his other leg is going to be it's going to be standing on tiptoe really so one two three four kind of like that and then we'll have him on a little hill like that now he's also going to want a tail isn't he so uh, it's going to be kind of big bushy tail sticking out there Good. Now, let's start drawing him in. Um, whenever I draw an evil character like this, I always kind of do the eyebrows first. And then put the eyes in like that. And then the eyeballs are little circles filled in. But just leave a little bit of whiteness there for the, for the, for the shininess of the eyes. Right? And then the moustache is a kind of a wiggly curvy line coming out like that those are his teeth going Brrr. and then with a kind of jittery hairy line follow it around now from down about here go all the way up to the top ear bring the ear down and then you can put the ear in there now from behind there go across then go up and back down and don't join it there because then that kind of makes it look stuck on rather than just placed on top does that make sense 
and that's the other ear there. Um, and you want this jittery line coming out like that. There's the uh, jittery line. And there's the thumb. Bring that first kind of hook bit in there. You want to take your time doing this. Don't rush it. Um, and then the next tenon will kind of come like that. And then the next one will go there. That's good. So bring that one around. Again, don't rush it. Take your time. There's no hurry. And something I have to keep telling myself all the time that I don't have to hurry. And you know, quite often I'm drawing against the clock and I've got deadlines and things to do. People want the work. And uh, and I have to tell myself sometimes, just calm down. <laughs> Because I'll only have to redo it if it's wrong. Right, bring that line there. And again, don't make it touch the top there. And it just kind of gives it a bit more body, really. And bring that bit around there. That crosses over the body there. And then I should do the claw that's nearest to you first. And, and then you can do the next one. Then you can do the next one. Then you can kind of park each one behind the one in front. And then that will go like that. Good. And again, bring that down here. Um, do the claw that's nearest to you first. Then you can park it in behind, behind, and behind. And that gives you that kind of three-dimensional depth to it. Then uh, I'm going to draw the tail first now. Because that's the tail is in the middle between the body and the back leg, so then that means I can you can you can see what I'm talking about. It kind of comes out from the right place in the right sort of depth, uh, and then that's the little kind of hill to standing on. Uh, what do we need? What do we need? We need some hairiness. How are we doing for time? Seven minutes! Oh my goodness, I better hurry up. Um, okay, little kind of wiggly lines like that will give you a hairiness. And just little, try and spread them out evenly. The little kind of, what would you call those? Little kind of hairs. <laughs> hairs, absolutely. And then we're going to want him dancing with the moon in the background. And, And then to prove that it's the moon, you're going to need some stars. So up, down, across, across, back. 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 And if you've never done stars like that before, then that's the way to do it. And then if you pencil them in, and then you can draw it in on top. Like that. So it's the, same, it's, 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 it's the same thing with everything. With that kind of star, if you've never drawn a star like that before, if you draw about 200 of them, one after the other, okay, up, down, across, across, back. Say it as you do it, up, down, across, across, back. And very set, and you do it the next day and the next day. Your, your hand just gets used to doing it, and it does it without you even thinking. And that's how you learn to draw. Just repeating and practicing and practicing. Now, I know this pen dries quickly. So I'm ready to rub this out and uh, make a mess of crinkling the paper up. <laughs> and oh, so there we go. How are we doing? Eight minutes. And forty. No. Okay. There we go. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Keep coming back to the Shoe Rainer Drawing Channel. Shoe Rainer Drawing on on, on YouTube and the Shoe-Tube.com is my channel. Uh, your website. www. And uh, where you can see these on, on schools and libraries and, and things. So um, enjoy it. Practice, practice, practice. See you next time.